Graham, a tough test against Premier League opposition, a 5-1 defeat. Uh, your thoughts on the 90 minutes? Uh, big lesson. I think I'd, uh, I'd rather it happen today than next Friday. But I know the Premier League and I know the Championship and I think it's a, a wake-up call for everybody. I think uh, we had a game against Maritimo on Wednesday in 30 degrees. I think it took a lot out of the boys. I didn't see the spark that had been there in previous games. Um, and obviously we flew back yesterday. So that definitely had an impact. I'll, I'll have a look at the physical stats and that will confirm my subjective opinion. But I think you have to, uh, you have to give Norwich credit as well. They, they finished 24 places above us um, last season. I know from my own personal encounters with them that they're a very, very capable team, both tactically, but in particular physically. Physically, I thought they were uh, very, very strong individually. So we'll, we'll go away and we'll chop it up and we'll look back at it and we have to learn from it. That's the step up. If people talk about a step up, that's a step up that uh, we need to, to get right. It's a, a, a sobering effect, but we need to be ready for Friday night, not, not today. I mean, an early goal is always demoralising. To have two within six minutes and three within quarter of an hour really sort of put an impact on that first part of the half, didn't it? It did, and the the set pieces sort of. I, I've come into Luton Town. I've got total respect for what's gone on before me, but I also have got the experience of working in the, the Championship and the Premier League for the for t ten out of the last twelve years. Norwich had six in the box. We've got three zonal and the spare man scores. So. There's lots of things to work at and lots of things we've got to get right between now and, and Friday night. I mean, as you say, learning, when you pick opposition for pre-season friendlies, you want the tough test and you want that to put your players, and you said it is a learning curve and an eye-opener from today. Yeah, but we need to learn quickly. It's like this learning curve can't go on. The learning curve finishes on Friday night and we need to be ready. Uh, when I got off at the Norwich fixture, I thought about it because I could have easily played a, a League One side here and won today. But I think we'll benefit from having that level of opponent. It'll over prepare us for Friday night. So we have to take it on the chin and we have to make sure that uh, we're ready for Friday night. I mean, obviously three early goals we mentioned, but Dan Potts pulled a goal back um, and lovely free kicks whipped in from Andrew Shinney. And Potts got onto the second ball as well as I think the first. He headed yep. down and, and then put into the back of the net. Yeah, again, it's something we've been working at during pre season. So. But then we're going to concede quickly, another set piece, another corner against. Again, there's a, a guy who's free, which can't happen at this level. So we need to look into it and we need to make sure we're, we'll put that right for Friday. And it's a bit unfair on your new record signing the goalkeeper there, Simon Sluga, that, you know, four goals in that first half. And I don't think any were really his fault, were they? Done nothing good he's done nothing and, wrong. No, yeah. Nothing wrong at all. I thought on the ball he was brave. It was a difficult, difficult... Uh, uh, I was going to say, it's a difficult debut for him today, but he's done nothing wrong at all. He makes the save, uh, and then the guy puts it in with a rebound. I think you look at Patrick Roberts' effort for the fifth, is, I don't think there's a goalkeeper in the world who would stop that, so a little bit disappointed with stopping the, uh, coming out and going to work as a midfield player and stopping the shot. But these things have happened, and now we need to address them, and we need to make sure we're better for Friday night. Be a lot of fans looking on that uh, the 11 you've selected today is an indication towards what you might be thinking for the beginning of the season. Eight of those got full 90 minutes and only three changes when you had other players at your disposal today. Yeah, no, I think after a, a day like today that places are up for grabs. Obviously we're hoping to get a, a couple more in still, so I wouldn't read anything into today's um, team selection, but going forward, uh, We'll have to pick the right players. You've hinted at my next question already regarding players coming in, obviously a week before the, the next game. How hopeful are you? Where, uh, is there anything further down the line to previous conversations? Yes, he is. Uh, and I'm very hopeful. Um, but obviously these things are never straightforward. You're competing with other people, other clubs. And uh, that along with... Listen, if we wanted to... If we wanted to uh, to peak today, they certainly wouldn't have done, played on Wednesday in 30 degree heat, they wouldn't have had a double session on Thursday, they wouldn't have flew back yesterday, they wouldn't have trained yesterday afternoon. That's the end of pre-season, they played today in fatigue. 
we've been playing in fatigue for the last month and today caught up with us a little bit so we'll make sure we'll be ready for Friday night. And potentially, as you said there, signings could be coming in for Friday so you could have a bigger squad to choose from than you've had today as well. Well we have to, we need, we need more competition, we need, uh, we need to improve things and as I've said to you, today is a great measurement for that so it's what you do with it. And looking at players that have missed out today through injury and other reasons, uh, you're hopeful that they will be full training this week and included, or is there any that can be much longer terms to? No, I mean there's one or two. Alan Alan Sheehan's back in training now. Danny Hilton's back in training. Glenn Ray is obviously going to be a bit, bit a bit longer, um, but obviously they need to play games. Kaz is a little bit off physically. He needs some work. If we put Kaz in on Friday night, we're going to we're going to repeat the cycle that's happened regularly during his career and there's only one thing going to happen, he's going to break down. He needs a period of volume, he needs to work for long periods in order to ensure when we up the, up the uh, intensity of training he can sustain it because he's got enough work in his body so he's in that program at the minute um, and there's nobody else up apart from him, uh, them players really. Good to have Kaz back in the squad after it looked like he wasn't going to be rejoining, re-signing. Absolutely, yeah. we managed to reach an agreement, we've dipped him in and out of training sessions in the last four days and you can see his quality, you can see his natural talent, so we're hopeful. How did that one come about? Sir? Because at the time the club and the player himself sort of suggested that at the end of it we both parted ways. And yeah. What, what, what cads back into the thinking? Well, I, I never let it go. Um, obviously the club had their stance. Excuse me, and Kaz had his stance, and I was a middleman. I, I, I really, really liked the player, and uh, made sure we, sta we stayed in touch. Found an, an agreement. You know, any kind of contracts, these things are, are a process, and it takes time. And luckily, we got him back through the door. In terms of the transfer market, Luton has spent ten years maybe being a big fish in a small pond. How, how much harder is it now in the Championship with the amount of money that's sloshing about to try and get the players in you need? Well, that, that would be an easy excuse for me, and I, I don't really, I don't really look at that. It, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, but I think that uh, so far we've brought in championship players with uh, championship experience. That's been the key for me because I had to help the boys that were here that who don't know the, the league. And as I've said, it's it's ongoing, and uh, we're still hoping to to get a few more in before August the eighth. Obviously, the, the big loss of the, the two fullbacks from last season. Is, are those areas that you're looking to strengthen as well? Uh, absolutely, yeah. But at the minute, we're having to play a different way. We haven't got James Justin and Jack Stacey anymore. I didn't want to lose them as players, but you can't stand in the way if a Premier League club comes in from them. They, they've, they've earned that right. So the diamond relies on penetrating fullbacks. I think. Uh, uh, forget today, Dan Potts has been, and Brendan Galloway has been excellent, so has Martin Craney. We just have to approach it in a, in a different way that, to, to what we did last season. Talking about the transfer, I saw an interesting thing with Nick Carford off on a sort of speed dating for transfers <laughs> scenario. Is that sort of the innovative things you have to look at to try and make it easy? Yeah, Mick, Mick's, been, Mick's been brilliant. He's prepared to travel anywhere and speak to anyone. He's got good contacts in the game, so. I can assure you, if anybody comes in here, it'll be it'll be it'll have been thoroughly prepared and, and looked at in detail. So the old speed transfer one, I've not heard, but I, I think I know what you're referring to. 